Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the shop. A bit of a rainy Saturday morning, but that doesn't matter. I'm out here. I got my coffee and I got a piece of firewood. Literally a piece of firewood. Um, the gentleman that gave me this said uh, it doesn't burn for anything. Um, it's hard to split, stringy. He doesn't know what kind of wood it is. I don't even know what kind of wood it is. We think black locust, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to make a couple of little six inch bowls out of it just to see what it looks like and to show you that literally anything can become a beautiful bowl if you work hard enough at it. So enjoy the show. First thing we're going to do is rip all the old bark off. Oh, look at that. We got bugs and everything in here. Fun. There's going to be bug holes and everything in this. Look at that. We got us a grub too. Oh yeah, wonderful. Interesting. All right. Now we're just going to go in the square it up. We'll square it up like that. Square it up like that. And we'll cut it in half. Then we'll trim this so we get a flat spot. That way I got some place to put my woodworm screw. Because I want the bowl in the shape of the grain. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but I think it'll be pretty. Oh, there's a lot of color in there. We'll see what happens. It's a small piece, face shield. A little bit more here. This thing's gonna have holes in it. <laughs> it's gonna be a soup strainer, <laughs> not a bowl. <laughs> Just the tool rust on the soup strainer. making the base like this because I'm going to use a different method. I'm going to use a glue block actually so I can save as much thickness on this as possible. By the time I carve away a half inch for a tenon, you know, I'm only going to have an inch deep bowl. Nobody wants an inch deep bowl.
bugs. I might have to watch that movie tonight. But anyway, there's a grub in a bowl. <laughs> All right, outside of one down. Let's put the other one up on real quick. This is going to be a bit of a challenge to unscrew. Very rare thing. Oh, we had a sleeping muffin. See, muffins don't sleep very often. Usually they're go, go, go. Oh, now the muffin's got a sledge. Oh, you're so pretty. You're a good puppy. A little bit wet, but a good puppy. Mm -hmm. All right, I figured I'd go over a little quick snippet of how I quick dry bowl. These little pieces I'm working on, they just feel wet to the touch. Also, with the bug holes and the fact that I have found bugs in them, um, I've decided that nuking them in the microwave, it'll kill the bugs and I can dry them overnight. Um, so all I do is I weigh them, 410 grams, write it on the bowl, 410, there you go. I'll weigh this one too. 546 now I'll nuke each bowl for about a minute um, about every half hour or so I'll weigh it after I nuke it every time or I'll weigh it just before I put it in the microwave every time I'm gonna nuke it it's gonna cause steam the water will come out of the bowl once the bowl cools off and the steam dries I can weigh it find out how much uh, waters come out of it and just keep doing that process until the weight stops dropping um i'll probably lose 20 to 30 percent maybe more of the weight of the piece in water um but we'll do that for the next however long it takes uh until the bowl is dry enough all right it's been a little while hour or so uh since the first uh, microwaving so let's see how much we've lost Started at 410, 402. And on this one, started at 546, 537. And we're going to do that for a while. All right. It's the next day. Here's our weights throughout the evening and night, and just weighed this morning at 515 grams. So we've lost, you know, 31 grams of water. What is 31 grams of water? 31 grams of water. I've got a little cup here. That's how much water has come out of this bowl. Well, yeah. it's a significant amount of water for a bowl that's only five inches in diameter, maybe two inches thick. 31 grams of water came out of that. So I thought, you know, just be an interesting thing to see. All right, we're over here at the bench. We're gonna hot glue a glue block on our bowl this is so i don't have to cut a mortise in or lose any more depth on it because just you can see it's already a pretty small bowl so uh, i'll glue that on there got their old 25 year old hot glue gun i've had this thing since i was a kid 
And just squirt a big old puddle on there. Get the hot glue gun stuck in everything. And try to get it centered. I drew a circle on there. Get it centered as best we can. If it squeeze out, I'm just going to leave it like that till it sets. It's tempting to want to mess with it, but. Yeah. All right. Hot glue's cooled off. All right, monitor up. We're going to use a little Green Harbor Freight lathe today. No sense running the big lathe for a little tiny bowl. Plus, if I get a catch or something, this will uh, just stop turning, whereas the big lathe will just destroy everything it touches. So, I'll just give it a spin. Make sure you're not hitting anywhere. And we'll get the turning. Rims where I want it. I got a little bit deeper. I gotta adjust where you guys sit though. Sanding. take it. Part it off, sand the bottom, put some finish on it. Sand it up, finish it. burn something all right we're doing a twofer here <laughs> I guess my bottom's not flat
Oh well. All right. I went back and redid it. That's a little bit better. All right, we're back at the bench. I'm gonna put some finish on these. First, I'm gonna take a drink of coffee. Do my normal thing. Small blue rag. I'm gonna just go with my uh, wall and oil utility finish. I, I don't know why, but I really like using it. Um, this one, you can kind of see through the bug holes. So, not like it's gonna be holding liquids. But for dried stuff, um, peanuts and cashews and M&Ms and stuff like that, perfectly fine. Now, I'm pretty sure this is Black Locust. We're going to do a test later on once it's dark out. And I'll show you how you can tell if you got Black Locust or not. It's uh, pretty obvious. But anyway, I'm going to do the inside and outside. And I'll bring you back for the big review. I'll also put some slow rollers uh, after the end and after my outro. And, uh, that's it. Pretty bowls, though. Piece of firewood. Turns into a pretty bowl. There. We'll let that soak in for a few minutes. And then we'll do the inside. But I'm not going to show you all that. No need to. All right. They're done. Now we're gonna see if they're actually black locusts or not. They came out pretty. They're very pretty bowls. A little bit of bug damage. Um, it's not gonna uh, hold soup, but you no, know, they're pretty. Yeah, pretty color. They got a, a very orange color. Um, can't really see the orange on camera, but they have a really orangish color. And now we're gonna see if they're black locust or not. See, I have my bug zapper sitting here because it's the only thing with a black light on it that I've got. So I'm gonna turn all the other lights off and I'm gonna plug that thing in. Of course, it's too dark and I can't find the... Ha ha, they glow green. I don't know how well it's picking this up. But, black locust glows green in black light. I'm going to pull you out of here. Look at him glow. I'm going to say they grow green in black light, which is really cool. I'll put a slow roller at the end here so you can see it. All right, I hope you all enjoyed my little experiment <laughs> making green magical glow-in-the-dark bowls. It's just the property of the black locust wood. Um, I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't get it. But they go gl they glow in the dark, or they glow green under black light. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Again, I'll have slow roller at the end of me flipping the... Uh, big lights on and off so you can see the change in the black light to the green to the black light it's pretty cool all right enjoy <laughs>